Welcome everybody. Today we're going to be exploring something a bit different, but still connected to NVIDIA. We're going to ask why there's something called an HGX. Now we've spoken quite a bit about the DGX, which is NVIDIA's purpose-built supercomputer. Now the HDX is something slightly different. The HDX is built not by NVIDIA, but by your other compute manufacturers, such as Supermicro or Dell, Fujitsu, IBM, or those type of guys. Now, as Data Sciences Corporation, we partner with both Supermicro and with Fujitsu. And with both these, you can build your own custom supercomputer using their platforms. You see, when we build or look at the DGX, it's a pre-built standard configuration that NVIDIA gives you as a building block for a massive supercomputer. So it will always have eight GPUs. It will always have the same amount of memory. It will always have the same amount of network cards in it. You cannot customize the DGX. It is built to that specification. But some organizations want some flexibility. They perhaps want to create a different way of building their supercomputer. Maybe the DGX is just not suited for them because it consumes a lot of power. Or perhaps they don't require as much networking within the space that they're looking at. So what then has happened is NVIDIA has certified certain platforms or certain architectures of compute by Supermicro, Fujitsu and the like that they endorse as a way of delivering a GPU-based computer. So what will you find within a HGX? Well, just as in your DGX, you'll have AMD processors. You will have your NVIDIA GPU to whatever spec you want, if it's the A100, the A40s, or any of the other GPU cards. You'll also have your NVLink, right? The NVLink, if you recall, is what allows the GPUs to talk to one another and transfer between the GPU's uh, data. And then we'll have all the other little components and access to NVIDIA's software. The big difference between them is that in that box, you can decide up front how many GPUs you want to start with. Now remember the DGX comes standard with eight. So you might say, well, you know what? I don't need a box with eight. I just want four in them, you know? So you can then design your HGX with four GPUs only. Or you could say, you know what? Let's just start with two. And then when we actually want to or need that processing compute, we can then scale by putting in extra GPUs. So your scaling unit for your compute is a little bit more granular when you go the HGX route, right? With a DGX, your scaling unit is one big DGX. And if you have the volume of data and ML processing that is demanded uh, or demanding a big DGX, then that's the way to go. It is the, 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 the gold standard, so to speak. But if you have smaller units of data and you need more granularity in how you're going to scale your compute, then the HGX might be the right solution for you. So we work extensively with the Supermicro platforms. We've got the experience with them. In there, we can then also change in the back end if we want to use InfiniBand or just normal uh, Ethernet-based networking. And that would be dependent on what your organization is doing in terms of, uh, of compute compatibility. But what you'll always have is your RAM and your AMD processors being uh, consistent in the way that you'll actually access those GPUs and then speaking out to the I.O. Now remember, the DGX has up to 10 uh, InfiniBand connectors using the uh, Mellanox Connect X6 architecture. We can put those similar in here into the actual super micros as well, the, the actual um, Connect X6 um, IB Ethernet network cards, but not to that same amount and capacity. You'll probably be able to get up to four of those within these machines. But still, fantastically built. Um, we support them in the same way that we support DGXs. You get the same level of uh, experience with that. And obviously, this architecture is endorsed by NVIDIA. So you know that it's built according to their specifications by those manufacturers. But it just allows you a bit more flexibility. And that really is what the HGX is. It's um, it gives you flexibility in how you build your supercomputer. And that's how to introduce our 4U system with dual processor configuration and NVIDIA HGX A100 8GPU baseboard. The 4U form factor is ideal for users to scale their deployment as needed. 
It has the right mix of CPUs to GPUs in the system. The interconnection between the two CPU sockets supports up to 18 gigatransfers per second and supports 3200MHz DDR4 up to 8TB when all 32 DIMM slots are fully populated. The 8 NVIDIA A100 GPUs are interconnected using NVIDIA NVLink and NVIDIA NV Switch technologies to provide superior GPU peer-to-peer -peer communication. With the interconnections, this configuration enables a non-blocking switch fabric. The switch fabric also supports a unified memory map, which means that every GPU can access the memory from any of the other GPUs directly. With the latest NVIDIA NVLink and NVIDIA NV Switch technology, each GPU can communicate with each other with a throughput of up to 600 gigabytes per second, which is twice as fast as the previous generation. This system is all PCIe Gen 4 based. The PCIe Gen 4 technology is twice as fast as previous generation PCIe Gen 3 systems. This means that the CPUs can communicate twice as fast with the GPUs and with network interface cards such as InfiniBand HDR cards which support 200 gigabits per second. This system supports up to 8 network interface cards or NICs connected via PCIe Gen 4 switches. This means that the NICs are connected directly to the GPUs via a PCIe switch fabric. When using an InfiniBand HDR NIC, the GPUs can exchange data with GPUs from other systems using remote direct memory access without CPU overhead. Since this system has 8 GPUs and can support 8 NICs for GPU direct memory access, this means that there is a 1 to 1 ratio of GPUs to RDMA capable NICs. Therefore, each GPU can communicate directly to GPUs and other systems with up to 200 gigabits per second. This system also supports Supermicro's AIOM and has two additional PCIe Gen 4 slots. The AIOM allows customers the flexibility of choosing different modules and third-party OCP 3.0 modules. The additional PCIe slots provide flexibility and support add-on cards. This system supports up to 10 NVMe U.2 hot swap drives and two M.2 NVMe drives for redundant boot drives. Eight of the NVMe U.2 drives are connected to PCIe switches, allowing the NVMe drives to support GPU direct storage. This allows GPUs in the system and GPUs in other systems within a cluster to directly access these NVMe drives without going through the CPUs. With proven 5 petaflops in 4U, this Supermicro server is perfect for any AI workloads including analytics, training, and inference. So once again, thank you for spending time with us here on uh, Whiteboard Wednesdays with Vanna. Please don't forget to like, share and follow our page on LinkedIn. And uh, please take a moment to think about what next you'd like to you know, hear us speak about. Maybe you want to explore a bit more about the Omniverse or maybe you're a bit more interested in some of the other technologies that NVIDIA have. Um, or perhaps it's without, you know, outside of the NVIDIA sphere. Maybe it's some of the other things that Data Sciences Corporation um, actually work on. Please, we really appreciate your feedback and your interaction with us. It um, really helps us to keep going and stay motivated to produce good content for you guys. Thanks so much.